Again, welcome to statistics, the meaning of data and data expression. And this is our first lectures, unit one, lecture number one. And we will go through what is said data. We will discuss what is said data and also the meaning of data, also statistics as a career, uh, data explosion, the fusion of data computing and statistics, and also the concept of big data. So historically, we have associated data with measurements and numbers that were purposefully generated to help solve a problem. In a, a very simple way, we can define data as an unprocessed information. A data can be test, it can be values, it can be audio, it can be video, and it can be images. But the whole concept of a data is an unprocessed information. So historically, we always associate data with measurement. For example, the height of a, a person, the weight, uh, address uh, any uh, information about an entity can be a data. So what constitute data is changing now and uh, due to again we are living again a data-driven society uh, online shopping education uh, etc. So presently the average smartphone owner uses about 3 billion bytes of data per month. And this number is growing rapidly. So the word data in this context is different from the historical notion of a purposely measuring or measurement to solve a problem. So another category of data comes from the desire to create artificial intelligence or the concept of data mining, data science as researchers confront the problem of reproducing human intelligence that must solve the same data problem we humans do, and also comprehending large volumes of visual and audio data. Uh, so in statisticians analyze data using pictures summary measurements to build a data-driven predictive models. They also develop method of designing experiments, also gathering data that are cost-effective and diminish biases. The concept of a bias is that as a statistician, when we are doing a research, most likely we are not going to use a population data. If I'm going to test any hypothesis, I'm not going to use the whole population data. We may take a sample from the population. Now, when we take the sample, we are going to do our hypothesis testing. The result that we get, we generalize it to the population. So if we don't take our sample very well, or we don't try to remove biases, it may affect our result. A very simple example is a Democrat's pass some bill and they are supporting the bill in the House or Congress. Now, if I want to know how the public react to the bill, if I go to mostly a Democrat neighborhood or a city, most likely I will get the support of being supporting the bill. Now, if I go to a Republican city, they may go against the bill. So the best way to, again, avoid this bias is to look for something like a swing state, a town that most likely we have 50-50 Democrat or Republican. It's not strictly Republican or Democrat. It can go either side. In this case, surely we are going to minimize the bias. To eliminate bias in general it is a different issue. So essentially, statistics is a formal way of thinking with data. Uh, so this is an example of a, a graph we have, and uh, we can see how statistics has become more uh, popular now from 1992 to 2015. And uh, we can see those with a PhD didn't grow too much, but we can see a little bit increase. 
but mostly the master, master's degree graduate has grown exponentially, almost exponentially. Because as we know now, uh, statistician skills are needed in many organizations because at the moment we are living in a data-driven society. A uh, statistician can work as a data scientist or even a data miner because this field also requires a statistics skills and techniques to solve again a problem using data. In medical field also the same thing. Statisticians are needed to solve biological problems or medical problems using patient's data set. Now with the data explosion, according to IBM, 2.5 exabytes of data are created every day worldwide. Again, our society now is electronically. Our society today is based on electronics. A uh, few years back, let's say 20, 30 years back, I can reserve an hotel using cash or hotel reservation using cash. Today, most likely you cannot use a cash to reserve an hotel. You have to use your credit card. Again, this generated data. Now, when you go to a hotel 30 years ago, some years ago, they give you a key, a manual key to open the door. Today, most likely they will give you a card that is again, adding some data about the door security, etc. So in this case, anytime I use the card to open my door or close my door, the hotel knows when the doors was open or closed. All these, again, are generating data. Uh, when we come to medical field, mostly now we are doing a personal medicine whereby we analyze individual DNA sequence, etc. And these are all data generation. So an exabyte is made of bytes, which themselves are units of di digital storage. So you know, a byte represents eight bits, and each character or a value digit or symbol stored in a computer normally are stored in a byte form. So a byte is made of eight bits. A bit for short is the binary digit, which can be one or zero. Now, by international system of units, they donate EZA as a multiplication by the sixth power of 1,000, or to be precisely 1,018. So in other words, one EZA byte will be 10 to the power 18, or 1,000 to the power 6, uh, which means we have 18 zeros. That's a lot, more than trillion trillion is of zeros, so it's like 1 million trillion, or 1,000 petabytes. So we can see the exabyte is a very huge uh, data. So this is the whole concept with the unit quantifying the bytes. Uh, 1 billion is 10 to the power 9. Again, 10 to the power 9, which is 1 gigabyte. And the terabyte will be 10 to the power 12 petabyte 10 to the power 15, then exabyte is 10 to the power 8, and we have zettabytes, which will be possible in a few years to come, 10 to the power 21. So the concept of data explosion, we can lay the foundation first to the cost of computer hardware storage devices. We can see that as the years goes by uh, storage, becomes very, very cheap. So this gives many organizations the chance to store their data. Also, we can see the evolution in our society in terms of transactions we do nowadays are all uh, electronically generated. We give the credit to the expression of the internet. Internet usage, mostly big data generated by internet system. So we can see the data explosion. Uh, 1985 is almost nothing. By 1985, we don't have, internet was not in public yet. It's not public. It's used privately, privately by research, it's mostly research institutions. We can see the internet came out somewhere around 1995. But around 1995, the internet was not as we see it today. There was nothing like Google, Yahoo, etc. 
is just a starting. There's no much entertainment or business oriented. But by the year 2000, 2005, 10 going, we can see the explosion of data up to now, 2020. So when you apply statistics method to increase larger data sets, there are few data sets you are likely to encounter that could again challenge modern computers. So using current computing technology, data set that are feasible to process simple statistics models in a reasonable amount of time are in the order of again terabytes soon it will be way more than that so that brings us to the concept of big data so big data is loosely defined concept used to describe data set produced by global network mostly internet driven or sensor laden world the most common meaning of big data is the set of data sufficiently large to be challenging to analyze a, a typical data set. And this data to be very large, and we have some few examples. As a frame of reference, the minimum for a large data set will be on the order of tens of thousands of servers and thousands of data storage arrays. And most data, big data, have four characteristics. First, the volume. The volume of the data have to be very large, so large volume of data. Also, the data may come from different sources and different forms. So the variety is different forms data can take. Velocity is the speed, how fast the data is generated. So how fast data is being sent to the data processing and data management infrastructure. Then we have the veracity, which is the trustworthiness of the data. So these are the four Vs that, again, associated to the concept of big data. And most of the data can be generated from, for example, will be medicine, and the DNA sequence of patients, or their clinical data, genomics, the human genomics projects, a lot of data generated, and also astronomy and cosmology using satellites, etc., cetera, uh, we generate data on how the behavior of the, of the nature, uh, atmosphere, et cetera. Physics also, we generate a lot of data. Business, because of online business, the internet, electronic business, now we generate a lot of data in business and industry field also. So we come down to what is a data set. So a data set, first we should understand what is a population. So that would be a population will be all the data set about a specific uh, subject or entity. So for example, we want to do a research in uh, New York State. New York State population of adults between the age of 19 to 25, we want to do some research work on them. The whole population is about, let's say, 15 million. Most likely, we don't want to use our populations for our research because first, it will take time, and secondly, uh, to consume a lot of money or issues. So population will be all the possible outcomes. So the collection of all outcomes, responses, measurements, or counts that of interest. In this case, the adults between the age of 19 to 50 in New York State, all of them are population. Now, if I take a sample of them, which means I have a subset of the population. So a sample will be the subset of the population. We can see the picture here. We have the whole population. We take a sample of three of, out of it. So an example here, we have a recent survey. 1,708 adults in the United States were asked if they think global warming is a problem that requires immediate government action. Now, 139 of the adults say yes. Now, here yeah, they say we should identify the population and also the sample, and we should describe the data set. So, the population will be consists of all responses, the response of all adults in the US. That will be the population. 
then the sample consists of response of the 1708 adults. We know this from the question, they mentioned 1708 as the total, but we know in US, 1,700 adults were asked if they think global warming is a problem. So that would be the total sample. And the sample again is the subset of the responses of all adults in the US. And the data set again consists of 939 yes and 769 notes. That's from the sample. So that will be the conclusion of this uh, lectures. Again, these lectures, we just want to go through what is the data. And as we said, the data will be a raw facts or figures or image, audio, etc. cetera, on, on process information. So data can represent an image or a test and digit. And also, we in this concept, today's concept, again, we have big data. We go through what is a big data, how data is generated, the sources that uh, we normally get data from also. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you for your time.